Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen, and today I'm going to show you the coolest cake hack. All you have to do is know how to trace. You can trace any design you want, you just have to make sure the design can lay flat. I used a wrapping sheet from Paper Source. I love their wrapping paper, it's so beautiful. This cool cake hack is going to allow us to pipe on a flat surface and then transfer it to the side of the cake. So you may be asking, why not just pipe on the side of the cake? Well, number one, it's a pain to pipe on the side of the cake. <laughs> it's much more fun to pipe on a fl flat surface. Number two, piping on a flat surface allows us to trace. So you don't have to be an artist. Number three is you can get a cool, smooth design this way. My cake is as smooth as my wrapping paper and actually looks exactly like my wrapping paper. It's so cool. Here's a list of the tools I use to make this cake if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. So we're going to be starting with a semi-naked cake, meaning that the sides are crumb coated and the top is frosted normally. If you don't know how to do this, I suggest watching my how to frost a cake tutorial. The reason we're only crumb coating the sides is because we're going to get the thickness of the sides of the cake from the buttercream that's on the acetate. So we don't want the sides of our cake to be too thick. This doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because we're covering the sides and we're also going to go over the top again. Frost your cake in the background color of your design. Make sure the cake board you use is big enough where you can wrap your frosted acetate around it and it's able to sit on the cake board. I use a cake board that I knew was going to be too big, but if you don't want your cake board to show after you're done with your cake, you can use a cake lifter. Um, to lift your cake when it's cold and transfer it onto a smaller cake board or like I did where I just lifted it straight onto the cake stand. And if it gets nicked up at all you can smooth it out using the warm blade technique which I'll show you later in this video. Okay so let's get started. First I want you to take your acetate roll and cut a piece of acetate long enough that it will fit around your cake and then some. I like to take something like a piece of paper with a perfect corner to make sure I cut my acetate sheet exactly straight just because the measurements are so important here. Take your crumb coated cake out of the refrigerator and tape your acetate as tight as you can around the cake and make a mark where that is. Do this measurement again but this time leave about a half of an inch gap around the entire cake. This leaves room for the buttercream design we're going to put on later. So unroll your acetate strip and you will see two marks and you're going to want to make a straight line down both of those marks. I like to use the paper again to make sure it's straight and then a ruler or anything straight you have to make that nice straight line. So when you're done with that you're going to see two lines, one shorter, one longer. We are going to want our design to fall about halfway between that. The reason for this is I don't want to go all the way to the end of the longest line because if we estimated wrong, the buttercream could overlap each other and I'd much rather have a gap to fill in on the cake than extra buttercream to try and get rid of. It just would be way too messy. If you're using a six inch round cake like me and a piece of wrapping sheet from Paper Source, this is going to be perfect. And you won't even have to cut your wrapping paper, but if you do, cut your wrapping paper so it's as long as halfway between those two lines you drew. Make sure you cut your wrapping paper the correct way where the most beautiful part is in the middle because that's going to be the front of your cake and the ends are going to be the back of your cake. They're going to meet at the end. I'm also going to want you to cut another piece of acetate sheet as big as the wrapping paper you just cut plus a few inches on each side so you have room to tape and untape your acetate sheet as you pipe your design. And keep the acetate sheet you drew the lines on aside. We're going to use that later. Tape your wrapping paper down to the working surface. 
and then tape the acetate sheet over that. Make sure the bottom completely levels up to the bottom of your wrapping paper. Also make sure the curved part of the acetate is the side that's touching the wrapping paper. So if you were to put the acetate on the wrapping paper, it would want to curl upwards on you. We want to do it this way because this is the shape we want it when we put it back onto the cake. And we don't want to be fighting the acetate to try and curve the other way. I'm also assuming you know how to color buttercream and pipe it. If you don't know how to do this, I suggest watching my How to Pipe a Cupcake Swirl tutorial where I take you through the whole process. I used my American Crusting Buttercream to complete this technique. If you're not using my recipe, I highly suggest testing your buttercream out on just a small piece of acetate and make sure that this process works for your buttercream. This technique really relies on the temperature of the buttercream. So if you have less fat or more fat in your buttercream, it could really make a big difference. I would do this anyways, even if you're using my buttercream recipe, just to make sure you have the technique down before you do all this piping work. <laughs> um, I did pick a very intricate design, so if your design's a little easier than mine, then it might be not as big of a deal. Quick note, how to make the best black buttercream is by turning it into chocolate frosting by adding cocoa powder and then add the black and then add some as much milk as you need so it's not too dry. Okay, now for the fun part, we can start piping. Before you start tracing, I have to explain something very important about this. So this is what we would call a reverse transfer. So to get the most accurate view of what we're actually gonna see on the cake, you have to lift up the acetate and look at that side. What we're piping on is essentially the back side. I remember when I first did a reverse transfer, it totally twisted my brain apart and I could not understand it. So forgive me if I over explain this, but for the people out there who have my brain, I'm gonna help you out. So imagine you're the artist and your audience is on the other side of a piece of glass. They're gonna see the art. You're drawing the art from behind. If this still doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter. Just keep this rule in mind. This is what I do. I repeat it in my head over and over. <laughs> I ask myself, is there anything in front of what I'm about to pipe? This is why I chose to do the light peach on the flowers first because there's nothing in front of it. Everything is behind it. And then like the green sepal of the big flower, that there's nothing in front of that. So you would also be able to pipe that. And then only after you pipe those first layers, then you can go in and pipe the dark peach. Once you're actually doing it, it'll make more sense. We can look at the other side and I will show you this in a minute. It's really the opposite of how you would paint. Also, you'll notice that your image is actually gonna be a direct mirror image of what you're tracing right now when you put it on the cake. So I'm using a tip number two for all of this design. I do switch to a tip number three just as a time saver when I do the background color, but I like to stick with those small piping tips because we really don't want this to be too thick and we also want it to be all level. So if you do a lot of piping, try to resist the urge to, you know how you'll just do one swoop of buttercream for a petal we really want to think of this like a colored pencil where we're, we're draw, tracing and then filling it in. So when you go to pipe the second layer, really make sure you get in between the existing buttercream. But don't worry if you go over the first layer because that will be hidden by the first layer, which you'll see if you look at the other side of the acetate. So when you look on the other side, you might notice that 
even after you've piped the whole design, there's going to be some little see-through parts. If it's very slight, don't worry about it because we're going to be actually pushing this buttercream down a little bit. Um, so it's going to smush slightly and fill in those holes. In some of the really teeny details, I'm just going to skip. For example, I only did the veins of the biggest leaves, um, but I did pipe the polka dots in the center of the flower. And I didn't pipe those buds that come out because without the small little sepals, which I didn't want to pipe, it just looks kind of weird. And try not to smudge the layer underneath. So if you're doing layer two, don't smudge layer one. And most likely your design will be cut off at the beginning and the end of your wrapping paper. So you can either decide to omit what's cut off or add to it. Just make sure not to go too far beyond your cutoff line. So when you're completely done with your design part, not the background part, you are going to push down on the buttercream to fill in those little holes. I'm using my American Crusting Buttercream, so by the time you get to the end of your design, the beginning of your design should be, that outer layer should be dry enough where you can push down on the buttercream to flatten it instead of it just smearing. You may have to wait a little bit for the end of your design to dry before you push it down. Once you're completely happy with your design, you can transfer it over to your cut up poster board and put it in the refrigerator. I kept it in there for an hour just to be safe. And then when you take it out, you can clean it up a little bit uh, before you start adding your background. So the reason we put it in the refrigerator is because it will harden. And then when you put your background color on, you're less likely to nick it up or smudge it. I use a number three tip for this just as a time saver. Then when you're completely done filling in your background, then you can do the same thing where you push it down and get rid of the little holes you see. And then put it back in the refrigerator for about one hour. Take it out of the refrigerator, use a 2B decorating tip, and pipe buttercream on the back of the design just to make it the right thickness. And then just spread it smooth with your angled spatula and then get another strip of acetate to put on top of this and make sure again that it's, when you put it down, it would wanna curve upward like before. Make sure that the two sheets of acetate are in line with each other. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is level so it goes on the cake well. So I use a level and put it on top of the acetate and just use a fondant smoother to kind of smush down where it's too high so it all evens out. And then put this in the refrigerator for about an hour to be safe. After you take it out of the refrigerator, you're gonna to wanna to take your other piece of poster board, put it on top and flip this over. If this is the first time you've ever done this before, it can be a little intimidating. But if you just press really firmly and squeeze in the center and flip it over really quick, you should be fine. Just be careful that acetate is slippery. And then we're gonna cut off the bottom of our frosting to make it nice and level so it'll lay nicely on our cake board. Do not cut off the top of the frosting. We're going to do that later after it's already on the cake. After we're done with that, we're gonna flip it over again and we're gonna peel the acetate off the back. And then fill in any holes. And then when the strip of buttercream gets flexible enough where you can wrap it around the cake, that's a good time to wrap it. We don't wanna wrap it when it's too soft because then it gets kind of messy but we definitely do not want to wrap it when it's too hard because we don't want to force it and then flex it and then it cracks. I don't think that would happen, but just to be safe. 
And then we're gonna cut our ends of the buttercream with our baker's blade um, where the wrap and paper ends so we have a nice ending point. And we can use a piece of paper again to make sure we get a straight line. And then just check that you are at the end of the design before you go ahead and cut it. Okay, our buttercream strip is ready. It's cold, but it's not so cold that it won't wrap around the cake. So go ahead and cut the acetate um, right at the edges of where the buttercream is and put a fresh layer of buttercream on that we know hasn't crusted over just to make sure it sticks really well to the cake. Okay, so we're gonna pick up the strip of buttercream by sliding our hands underneath it, picking up with two hands, just kind of resting it on the cake board and then wrapping it around the cake. First, you can press it around the cake with your hands, but then I like to take a fondant smoother to really make sure it's pressed tightly against the cake. And some of your underneath buttercream, the green in this case, is going to smush out the sides a little bit. This is why I left a gap. <laughs> and we're gonna fill that gap up with more buttercream, smooth it out, and put a piece of acetate over that. And I like to just smooth it with a small piece of acetate. And I like to fill in that little gap at the top of the cake now, around the edge of the cake, because it's easier to do it now than later. Now, this is the most important step, so please don't forget this step. You must freeze this cake for at least an hour before you try to take the acetate off. Freezing the buttercream is what allows it to separate from the acetate. If you're having trouble with this, it's probably because your crumb coated cake isn't level. So take off the strip of buttercream right away, put it in the refrigerator, and try to get your crumb coated cake level. And then take out your buttercream strip, let it soften again, but not too much. Um, and then try again. Okay, the moment of truth. After your cake has been in the freezer for at least an hour, you can try taking off the acetate. There will be a very thin residue, like a print of your design on the acetate, but if you see any chunks of buttercream coming off, stop immediately, put the acetate back on, and put your cake back in the freezer. If a big enough chunk came off of buttercream, it's because it's stuck to the acetate. So when you put the acetate back on, it will go back in place, but try to kind of melt it with your fingers or even a hot blade to make sure you're sticking it back into the cake. If you keep having problems, it's probably your buttercream it may just not be the right buttercream for this technique. This is why I suggest in the beginning of the video to try a little design on a piece of acetate just to see if this whole process works with your buttercream first. At that point, all the freezing is not gonna do anything, so I'd eventually just slowly peel it off and then fill in the buttercream as best you can, freeze it for another hour, and then continue on to where we're at right now in the process. Okay, so this cake is frozen. So we're gonna take our blade and we're gonna run it under hot water and get the blade really hot and then wipe it completely dry. And we're gonna be able to smooth it over the cake and that is gonna smooth out any of those little bubbles that you see. There's not a lot, but let's make this look beautiful. We did all this work. <laughs> So since your cake is so cold, the hot blade is gonna melt just enough of your buttercream to fill in those little holes, but not enough to change design. You do have to be careful around the bl any black buttercream because the cocoa in there will melt a little faster, so just be aware of it. You can scrape the 
um, cocoa off the design with your angled spatula. Make sure you're wiping the buttercream off your blade after each stroke. There may be a couple holes that uh, the baker's blade just didn't do it. So you can get your angled spatula really hot and dry it completely and then just spread it up or down um, to get rid of the holes. And you're probably gonna have to go over your where you filled in the gap a little more um, deeply because it might be a little bumpy there. So as you can see here, there's a little difference in color between the buttercream that I filled in the gap and the other buttercream. The reason for that is because the darker buttercream had a longer time it was exposed to air, so it oxidized more, which darkens the color, and the lighter color had less time. If you want to try to match up those colors more, you can leave the acetate off of it for a little while and let it oxidize longer so they become the same color. But I didn't wasn't concerned because I knew I had to do something to that gap to tie it all in together, which you'll see in a minute here. Okay, another really important rule. Do not try to cut off the top when the cake is frozen, it has to be at refrigerated temperature. So if you want to play it really safe, you could let the cake cool to room temperature and then put it in the refrigerator uh, for an hour to be safe and then take it out and go ahead and slice off the top and just slice that level with the top of your cake. And then you're going to want to add buttercream on top. If you try to cut it frozen, it will crack and it will crack down the cake. And just smooth this buttercream over with an angled spatula just like you would a regular cake. Just be careful not to get the colors on the sides mixed in too much with the top of the cake. You can kind of fold those over just a little bit and it's kind of cute how it kind of folds over slightly onto the cake. If you don't want to be bothered with this, you can just put a border around the top. Okay, so now it's time to get creative and try and fill in that blank space in the back of our cake. So get your finger wet and dip it in the gold sanding sugar, and you're just gonna dab it where the cake is blank to fill it in. So that looks really good, but I think it could look even better. So we're gonna add gold leaf. Open one sheet of gold leaf and be really careful. It crinkles extremely easily, which is fine, but ideally you want it to crinkle onto your brush. Now this amount here that you see is about a half of a sheet. So the way I accomplish that is I just put my thumb on the corner of the sheet and put my dusting brush on the other half and kind of pulled it away. And just that teeny bit of pressure will pull it apart. It almost is like it's melting apart. It's hard to explain until you've actually used it. And once it's on your dusting brush, you simply just place it against the cake and it will then stick to the cake like a magnet. And then pat your brush on top of it a little bit just to kind of flatten it out a little. And the smaller amount of gold leaf you want on a certain part of the cake, just take a smaller piece of gold leaf. And once it's on the cake, you can break it up a little bit by kind of dragging your brush across it. It will kind of separate it. And don't try to fight it too much. You will not win. <laughs> it's cool art like that, though. It's like every piece is unique. So then the other piece of this is just placement. Where do you put it? So I just do different sizes scattered around. And if you're just putting it on a section of your cake, I like to have it just taper off into the other design so they kind of merge. It just ties it all together. I have to say the back is now competing with the front. I love when that happens. So that is it guys. You now know how to accomplish this amazing tracing hack. And you can use any design you want. I love this cake. It's so elegant and romantic. 
I think it would make a beautiful tier for a wedding cake or a bridal shower or anniversary or anything really. Thank you guys so much for watching and can't wait to see you next time.